Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. This is an update video and I'm actually a little late to the party. I didn't even do uh, the initial holiday update, but I wanted to get into the update that came right after. I don't know if this is specifically for like the older models or where this update fits in, um, but I have a 2018 um, Tesla Model 3. If you haven't been to my channel, I bought it used and uh, Bought it with like 33,000 miles. It now has about 63,000 miles, as you'll see on this video. But I got the update 2020.48.30 really close to like Christmas time. So I got the Christmas update and then this one right after. But I haven't gone into a video about it. I actually wanted to show some of the things that have been going on with my car. Um, I don't know if it's due to the update or just where they're rolling out full self-driving beta to different people and it's uh it, it seemed to pull back a little bit on my full self-driving experience and i'll show you what i mean um but to get into the the release notes here uh they have a new layout and so each of the things that get updated are a little bit different on the screen you see um the battle of polytopia was one of the games added cat quest which is really cool because you can play them while driving like not the driver but uh, your passenger can play it. You can click, I'm a passenger in the car, much like how like Pokemon Go is, you know, you can still technically play it in the car, but you have to click that thing. You know, I would never recommend that while driving, but, um, you know, it's got solitaire cat quest. Uh, those are like the, the new improvements to it. And then driving visualization. Uh, so they changed the layout. Um, I actually really, really like the layout with the bigger, you know, uh, full self-driving visualization on the left and then the map on the right I think it's a lot better use of the screen real estate and then obviously you've got the the dynamic animations that come on so like if you know if I were to hit the the front open it animates the front open right so I'll show you guys I'll have to go close them here in a second but pops those you know if you pop your window or your door open window down animation and then even if the car's, you know, in drive, you can see the the wheels move. And schedule department departure improvements. Um, this is actually good if you want to warm your battery up. I live in a very cold area. I live in Utah. It's, it's very cold. It's snowy, right? So um, I leave pretty much the same time every single day for work. So this is really, really important for me, and it's great. Um, I do like that the supercharger display improvements are there, which shows a number of how many spaces are taken up. That was really helpful because we went out of town. Um, and then at vehicle information, all of your information is no longer at the T at the top and uh, now can be found right in here. So if you were to go into software, this tells you everything. Yeah, so I'm at 63,558 miles. And, you know, it's it's been a fantastic car. I've actually loved it the whole time. But yeah, so that's where you find that. You know, I do like the release notes being in a list form, much, much better. And then, you know, other things that are really important to me is accessing the text messages and phone calls, right? So really easy to do now. You've got this. I changed it to a Hoya Hoy. That's a, you know, Easter egg that Elon Musk added. But if you go in here, you can see I don't have any messages, but it would pop up on there and lists them a little bit better. It's a lot easier. You can skip past them by clicking um, the dial twice on the right hand side and you can click once to reply to the text and it makes it a lot easier because before it was kind of you felt kind of stuck when you were replying to anything. So very cool quality of life improvements. In fact, if you just swipe up right there, um, I'll do it again. So right there, you can actually pull messages up. I don't know if anybody's done a video on that, but I figured that out the other day. I uh, really like that because it makes it a lot easier. And, uh, you know, same same animations here. You show the PSI. That's weird that only one of my tires is showing up there, probably because I just parked. And then, you know, your last charge, your, your info basically on the battery. So nothing's changed too much there. I do like that they have the camera in a lot easier spot to get to now. And then the windshield wipers, of course, uh, much much better i do also like the black and gray aesthetic with the white tones because it reminds me more of how the cyber truck looked when it came out and i've been looking forward to the cyber truck for a lot of reasons but i also loved the animation and how they had that laid out um also oh huge thing 
This is really important. If you're buying a used Tesla and it's really important to you to have your car be able to fart at other people. <laughs> so the external speaker, um, I actually was bummed out about this when I found this out. But if you get a 2018 Tesla Model 3, um, you are not going to have the speaker in the car. I'm not sure what year they added that. But the boom box feature that everybody else got is not on here. So if I go into toy box, you know, you have the new tracks, the emissions, you know, like the the whoopee cushion, romance, sketch pad, Mars, Santa, and then rainbow road on everybody else's. It has a thing called boom box. You can actually add your own sounds to the car so you can change the horn. You can change how it sounds when you're driving. Um, different things and aspects of the car are really cool with that. And I was totally going to do a nerd thing and make it sound like Kylo Ren's TIE fighter. Um, I thought that that would be really cool when I was driving, but alas, you know, 2018 didn't have the speaker in there. So, um, if you're, if that's really important to you, don't buy the 2018, make sure you know which one you're buying. You know, with that said, let's get into some of the changes with full self-driving that I've noticed. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, whatever the issue is with my car, um, it doesn't steering wheel nag me all the time. It only does it like once or twice on a drive now. Uh, I've actually noticed that it's at the same spots each time. So I don't know if it's a GPS thing that triggers it. Um, but most of the time people have to touch the steering wheel. Otherwise it'll get mad at them every 30 seconds. Ours doesn't do that. Don't know why we took it in for service at one point, got it back after service and it had stopped doing that. And um, to be quite honest, I'm not sad about it. All right, so to get into the drive portion of this, I'm gonna show, you know, full self driving. I don't have the beta. It's not gonna have the crazy visualizations or anything like that. Just running the latest update on uh, what everybody else gets. But I did wanna show you, um, you know, what it looks like on a couple of complicated parts. Obviously this is an update video, so it's not gonna have a ton of the driving i just want to show you some of the issues that are going on so i actually took it off so it'll lane change um without having me confirm and for those of you who don't own a tesla to confirm you usually just grab the steering wheel it'll start flashing but mine i since i don't have steering wheel nag um, i let it just drive me how i would assume that it would drive any other person if they had full self-driving now this lane change i don't know why this was so difficult for the car but that was extremely difficult usually it's pretty smooth so this is kind of a complicated on-ramp so i wanted to show you guys this in fact i don't know why it's going to get into this lane we'll see if this can actually complete the maneuver in time it's got to be in that right lane heading towards las vegas but it pulled me into this one for some reason I always have mine set for eight over, but I do usually click it up to 80. Um, in Utah, people pretty much drive 85 for the standard. Okay, yeah, you can see the line right there, which means it, it knows that it needs to move over. I don't know why it wanted to overtake people. Probably just because I had the speed set to 80 miles an hour. Now, the other thing, if you if you do own a Tesla or you want to own a Tesla, when you're letting it drive you using full self-drive, which is where it's navigating, navigate on autopilot's on, the blue steering wheel is on. Whenever you see those off, I'm actually in control of the car. So this drops to 50. Um, I don't want that, so I'm gonna go back up to 75. Actually, I'm gonna go up to 80, just so people don't get mad at me. So this is a fairly new on-ramp. They had been redoing this one for a long time. Uh, you may have seen it on other drives before it was under construction, but it kind of has a weird off-ramp and we'll see if it wants to follow onto the freeway where we need to go or if it wants to try and take that. Um, a little stressful when it tries to take it and you got to take over because it's kind of a quick one. So yeah, my follow distance also is set to, oh, it was set to multiple car lengths. I do want it to be one. Yep, like, oh, okay. Yeah, that that wasn't the best, but you could, you could see, hopefully you can see on the camera, but the lines still have the old lines. Okay, here's another maneuver that I'm not quite sure why it's doing it. Um, it's moving me over to the right, maybe the speed, but it will need to move over to the left as we're getting on here. Typically, I've noticed, uh, so the update right before the 30 update, 
that we're on right now it was actually a lot smoother uh, it seemed like mad max had an upgrade where it was letting it lane change a little bit faster and smoother um, but this one not so much it feels more hesitant and uh, it, it's almost weird it's almost like it's more cautious before getting what full self-drive beta people have as the finished product all right let's see if this person backs off so i can get over so it actually handled this pretty well it used to be a lot sketchier of an on-ramp uh, this is a lot better than it used to be now the other thing is i have it set to go all the way over to the left lane and to go into the carpool lane we'll see if it actually does that i think for the the phantom braking though i want to be in the carpool lane hey look there's another tesla homie up in front of me you know it's uh uh, if you guys own a Tesla, there's always people and they they always wave, you know, when you're in a Tesla. There's a ton more now. I think Elon Musk making that push to sell 500,000 in Utah. There were a ton of people that bought Model 3s and Model Ys. Pretty crazy. Okay, so full self-drive, still not courteous. That wasn't the best maneuver there. I didn't want to intervene, but I was about to because I didn't want to be rude to that car or that person, but all right. So pretty standard drive. Um, it is weird because it still hasn't tried to really move over to the left. I think it tried for a second and then just stayed in the lane because the person to the side of me was like in the blind spot. Um, these are really popular exits, so I really wish it would go all the way over. I'm gonna have to take over here in a second if it doesn't start making over to the carpool lane. I feel like Navigate on Autopilot's got a little ways to go, but you know, by me pointing these things out, it's more of just my observation being on different updates. Um, I actually am thoroughly impressed every single time a new update comes out because of improvements in a lot of the different areas. So it seems to get better and better each time, um, but there are, you know, some hiccups. And so I'm just pointing out the hiccups that I notice in case you're getting one, you know, to be aware of. But Navigate on Autopilot is nearly flawless on my way to work and most of the time I'm driving around. So uh, I really don't have many complaints with that. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to like take over because I've got to get all the way over there before this section. Otherwise, I don't know if it'll do it. This guy next to me is like right next to me though. So I do want to hit my blinker. So, all right, so it'll try and pull me out of the carpool lane if I do have that on. So I'm gonna just go straight autopilot as you can see, you can turn on and off, navigate on autopilot, and that's what I've done in this situation. Oh, this guy's flying behind me, so I, we're going to see... Oh, shoot. So there's a car on the side of the road where this usually happens. I hope I can still show it as a test because it might break just because it sees this car over here. But here's where it typically will do the phantom braking. So it started to, but that's there on the side. All right. Well, and maybe it's not going to do it because I'm filming a video of it. Yeah, it didn't do it. Usually right there is where Phantom breaks really hard. So um, I guess that was kind of a moot point there. But maybe it was just a small improvement that happened because a lot of times there are improvements that will happen just from the, the learning, you know, the neural network that Elon Musk talks about. But, um, well, I'm happy that that didn't you know phantom break me but at the same time i did want to show you guys how bad it had gotten so i guess there's that right so anyway well i don't really need to show you the rest of my drive it'd be a boring drive here so you know if you like the video if it was helpful like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video